Yes. Okay. Shall we start? It's time to start. Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to host you online uh, on our uh, uh, webinar today. Uh, my name is Artur Nitsevich. I'm a partner of Interlegal. Uh, now I'm introducing uh, our speakers and uh, I will tell you very briefly uh, how we are going to spend uh, uh, our uh, webinar today. We used to hold uh, conferences and events uh, eye to eye, but uh, now everything is online, we have to adapt. And uh, it is uh, my pleasure uh, to uh, uh, introduce you to uh, our lawyers, certified attorneys uh, at law. This is Irina Maltseva uh, from Ukraine and uh, Mert Tuna Kartuna uh, from Turkey. Uh, these are uh, our speakers for today's uh, webinar. Uh, Interlegal is a Black Sea law firm uh, and uh, Turkey and uh, Ukraine probably are the main countries uh, here in the region, in the market. And uh, uh, as one of our colleagues uh, says from time to time, that uh, everything that is uh, to the east from the European Union is uh, terra incognita. Uh, so regulations uh, are not clear, uh, no knowledge on the procedures, uh, but cargo is moved and uh, from time to time uh, claims uh, arise. So it is very important to understand some key issues, some basics to remember for your day-to-day business. So uh, Irina and uh, Mert, today will have two presentations for you, uh, one from Ukraine and another one from uh, Turkey, uh, explaining uh, some basics, some uh, things to remember uh, from uh, our own practice. We run many cases uh, every day in that sphere and uh, their presentations will be based also uh, on the case study. So uh, uh, Irina and Mert both will support their uh, presentations by uh, practicalities, by practical views from the cases that we had in our uh, practice recently. Uh, both presentations will be about uh, 30 minutes. So all in all, we expect that during one hour, uh, the webinar will be over. Questions are welcome. You may put them in the chat and uh, our speakers will do their best to reply uh, and uh, to be useful uh, for your business. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, I'm leaving uh, everyone with uh, our two uh, speakers and probably Irina, uh, you can start. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Artur. Dear colleagues, uh, good day. We are happy and glad to see you at our webinar. And uh, today uh, we will talk about uh, such institution as uh, subrogation and recourse in Ukraine and Turkey. How does it work in our country and uh, what differences between them in our country? So, uh, before we um, get to the essence of, of the webinar, please let us introduce our firm. Uh, we are an interlegal law firm which specialized in transport, shipping and trade. Uh, interlegal law firm has uh, two, more than 25 years of ex experience. Uh, we have 29 associated offices all over the world. Um, as our statistics shows, um, more than 70% of uh, disputes we uh, settled, um, we solved by the, in the amicable way by means of the claims handling. Um, more than uh, uh, 500 clients and trust uh, as uh, their uh, 1,000 uh, of the cases per year. And uh, our clients are the priority for us. So we, we are working on the basis 20 hours to seven days. Uh, 
Actually, uh, also we have our own offices, six offices uh, in Black Sea region, uh, which is located in Ukraine, Moldova, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, uh, Georgia. Uh, so, in case if you have any problems uh, or potential case in uh, different countries, uh, you can apply to us and uh, we are able to provide you with help. Uh, the goal of the webinar, I believe that the main reason and the main aim of our uh, webinar is to give you a knowledge what is uh, um, this, uh, what are these uh, institution and how they work in particular in our country, in Ukraine and Turkey, uh, what uh, difficulties you can face too, and uh, whether it is really possible uh, to secure and to protect your interests in our countries. Uh, the speakers of our webinar, me, my name, Interlegal Maltseva, uh, or Irina Maltseva, uh, I am a, a lawyer and uh, attorney at law of uh, Interlegal Law Firm Ukraine, and Mr. Mert Akartuna, who is attorney at law in Dogu Law Office Interlegal Turkey. So I uh, will start, and uh, my block number one is uh, some nuances of uh, subrogation and recourse in Ukraine. Um, it's important to say that um, there is no, uh, in our uh, judicial um, system, there is no unique, uh, uniform uh, application of these um, uh, two institutions, but uh, we have a court practice, some uh, general regulation which, uh, with, uh, which helps um, us to resolve such kind of cases. Uh, of course, after uh, payment of uh, insurance identity, the uh, insurance company obtained the right to claim the guilty person. And although the both of these institutions, subrogation and recourse, are variants of um, law of claim, but they are not identical uh, concepts. So let's uh, discover the differences between these institutions. Uh, first of all, Ukrainian legislation is based on uh, continental law. So general and main uh, principal areas of, of law, uh, such as law of contracts, uh, of uh, obligations, liability, etc., are based on international tradition, and we uh, try to solve uh, all uh, dispute in an amicable way, um, if it's possible. But uh, there is some exceptions. For example, if we are talking about domestic transportation um, and uh, carriers and forwarding activity, uh, uh, carriers and forwarding in, in private sector and carriers and forwarding uh, liability responsibility, uh, this uh, um, these uh, matters, this issue, uh, are regulated by domestic, um, domestic local um, law, as uh, as usual, and um, uh, it will be a civil code of Ukraine, uh, the law on transport forwarding activity, and commercial code of Ukraine. That's why the main uh, reason to uh, check all the provisions in your contracts and to put all the necessary provisions because in case of any accident uh, or any damages uh, it might be the situation when uh, we will not define uh, the regulation in our legislation but uh, the contract will help you, us to find the legal position uh, in order to secure your interests. Um, so um, CMR convention, if we talk about road transportation, uh, this uh, international act uh, uh, is um, very important in Ukraine because the CMR convention is applied uh, into our legislation and even uh, during the court proceeding, uh, court uh, consideration of the case, always judged um, taking into account this document and uh, issue to render it, uh, the uh, court uh, decision based on this document. So please, uh, if you issue CMR uh, CMR document, please um, put all necessary information correctly and in full. 
So what are distinctive characteristics uh, between subrogation and recourse? As I said, uh, we don't have the uniform application of this uh, to an institution. And uh, in Ukraine, there are a lot of cases when uh, the dispute uh, under recourse uh, uh, is considered by the regulation related to subrogation and vice versa. But uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of court decision, a lot of uh, explanation of Supreme Court, etc., which clarify the using of these uh, uh, two institutions. So what are the differences? application. Um, of course, we know that subrogation and, and recourse uh, it's, uh, uh, are two institutions from the um, insurance sphere. And uh, after payment, uh, the insurance uh, company the, uh, obtain uh, the right of subrogation or recourse. And uh, uh, from the one side, uh, it uh, uh, might seem that they are similar or but not uh, in ukraine uh, as per our legal uh, as per our legislation uh, subrogation and recourse uh, have different attitude to cargo and liability and it's important to remember that subrogation is always applied to cargo and recourse is always uh, always uh, applied to liability so it's uh, a key point and in case you have some dispute and you don't know um, by means of what subrogation recourse, recourse to go to the court with uh, what lawsuit you the first what you shall to do is uh, to uh, see uh, its cargo insurance or liability insurance obligation status uh, in case of subrogation, uh, there is a replacement of a party in the currently existing obligation. Uh, after um, ex accident, insurance accident, and after payment, uh, the um, uh, suffered party transfer his right to his insurance company uh, to claim the guilty person, uh, to guilty uh, company. Um, so uh, we see the first replacement of a party and the transfer of the right. Uh, if we are talking about recourse, uh, there is no replacement, any replacement, and there is no transfer of rights. Uh, the new obligation occur, uh, occurs. So um, this is distinctive characters, uh, characteristic of these two institutions. And uh, as we no, yes, assignment of rights. Uh, in case of subrogation, uh, it um, commenced from the uh, moment of the accident, but in, uh, in case of recourse, there is no assignment of rights, but the new uh, obligation occurs from the moment of insurance uh, indemnity payment. Time bar, uh, it's um, quite uh, interesting. Um, issue because in case of subrogation, uh, the du uh, duration of uh, time bar shall be calculated from the date of uh, insurance accident occurred. Uh, in case of recourse, um, it will be calculated from the uh, date of insurance identity. Um, if the claimant, if um, the insurance company is a claimant in court proceeding, uh, thus uh, the time bar will be three years from certain moments. Uh, but uh, if uh, you are a forwarder or a shipper or a cargo owner uh, and uh, for example, uh, the carriage was conducted uh, by road transport, uh, then the time bar will be one year. It depends on the status of uh, person and, uh, the, um, uh, and the transportation uh, which, um, by which the carriage was uh, conducted. So uh, let's summarize uh, our knowledge based on uh, the issue we discussed. Um, simple situation case, uh, forwarder has uh, three contracts with uh, three person. The first uh, contract was uh, concluded between forwarder and customer on uh, uh, forwarding services providing. Uh, 
The second contract was concluded between co uh, forwarder and carrier uh, on uh, actual carriage of goods. And the third uh, contract was concluded between forwarder and insurance on cargo insurance. So as we uh, discuss what it might be, subrogation or recourse, of course, you shall uh, look at uh, the insurance. Uh, insurance policy and if it's a uh, cargo insurance we will uh, go to the court with a loss you by means of uh, subrogation uh, the similar situation but with uh, some differences uh, three contracts with the uh, customer carrier and insurer but in this case uh, we have the contract between forwarder and insurer on liability insurance and uh, as we discuss of course uh, it will be recourse uh, and we know uh, which uh, with what uh, lawsuit we might go to the court but uh, I would like to show you our uh, our um, features uh, of uh, legislation of foreign court system. Um, for example, on our cases, the case number one, uh, simple case. There is free party of the uh, transportation shipper who is located in Germany, carrier who is, is located in Ukraine and consignee uh, resident of Ukraine. Uh, there was a transportation from Germany and uh, to Ukraine and uh, 1,400 units of electronic goods was tran transported. Uh, the cargo was accepted for transportation without any reservation, any remarks regarding quantity and quality. But uh, during the transportation, uh, the cargo was stolen, uh, theft on uh, the um, free parking place without security. And uh, I must say that we have a lot of cases when cargo was stolen due to the fact that driver make uh, stops uh, in such places, in a parking uh, place without security. So please, if you have a uh, road um, transportation, transportation, road carriage, uh, keep on that uh, the drivers make stops only on secured um, uh, places. So uh, in this case, uh, we have the uh, insurance policy, the cargo was insured and uh, the risk which uh, covered it uh, was covered during transportation by road, uh, air and sea transport. So it suits. Mm, uh, due to the fact that uh, this accident was considered as uh, insured accident and uh, our client had um, the insurance policy, he obtained the insurance compensation from his insurance uh, company. Then uh, the insurer issued the letter of subrogation under which he uh, obtained the right uh, to claim the guilty person. Uh, uh, and uh, we initiated uh, the um, uh, court proceeding uh, in favor of our client um, insurance company and uh, uh, we um, get the um, successful decision from the court. Case number two, uh, it's uh, a little bit different. Uh, and as you see, there is uh, uh, five um, um, person uh, uh, during this transportation who was uh, participated. And uh, the cargo was uh, shipped, uh, supplied from Germany to Ukraine, uh, but uh, there is a forwarder, a uh, resident of Germany. So the shipper cargo owner concluded the contract with the uh, forwarder on uh, forwarding services um, providing. Uh, forwarder found the carrier Ukrainian resident uh, in order to uh, uh, carrier uh, to uh, conduct the actual carrier carriage. Uh, during the transportation, the cargo also was stolen. Uh, it was household chemicals and uh, um, liability of forwarder was uh, insured. Uh, due to the fact that uh, the forwarder was the contractual uh, 
party for the shipper, uh, the shipper initiated uh, the uh, court proceeding in Germany in order to get some compensation from the forwarder. Uh, the Germany court uh, rendered uh, issue providing the ob obligation of uh, the forwarder to make a comp uh, compensation. And of course, the forwarder via his insurer um, provide, uh, provided the uh, cargo owner with uh, some uh, insurance indemn indemnity. Uh, after that, uh, um, insurance company obtained their right. As you see now on the slide, the case solution scheme, uh, the insurance company obtained the right of recourse, of course, uh, uh, because of the uh, fact that liability of forwarder was, um, um, was insured. Uh, also, it's important to say that um, uh, not always, if we, talk, we are talking about recourse, not always uh, we can find the contractual relation be bet uh, between the um, suffered party and uh, guilty party or uh, insurance company and guilty party. It can be a relations in tort. Uh, but in a case of subrogation, there is always contractual relations. So uh, the insurance company was our client, so we um, initiated the court proceeding uh, against the carrier. Uh, this case was a little bit um, difficult and had uh, some problems, and that's why. Um, Depends on the region uh, of the court. Uh, we have in Ukraine, we have uh, different practice uh, uh, of consideration of such kind of uh, cases. For example, if you have a case uh, in a court of Odessa region, uh, we have more uh, loyal uh, attitude to um, parties, to documents, and uh, uh, the standard set of documents will be suitable for consideration of your case. But uh, for example, if you have a, a case, court case in a Kiev region, you must be prepared that the judge will request for all possible documents in order to clarify uh, all the relations, uh, to see whole chain of relations uh, uh, from the beginning, from the uh, cargo owner, from the shipper. So uh, depends on uh, the region, depends on uh, judge, uh, you can face two with, with uh, different difficulties. Uh, in our case, um, in this case, uh, the, um, this dispute was uh, considered in Kiev uh, court, uh, in court of Kiev region, and uh, um, our uh, judge uh, requested for uh, providing insurance policy, a bank receipt, uh, uh, purchase uh, sale contract, uh, uh, different uh, correspondence, etc. So a lot of documents were uh, requested. Um, but the main uh, problem was that our client couldn't provide us with the insurance policy. Uh, he provided us with uh, another document. It's, uh, uh, it calls um, as a general declaration of insurance. But uh, the judge said that it's not enough and he wants, uh, wanted to see the insurance policy in order to um, uh, see that uh, insurance company, uh, our client, had a right to make insurance identity. And uh, now he has a right to claim the carer. Um, despite the fact that Ukrainian uh, legislation uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't um, consist the uh, requirements for providing a certain documents, um, it, um, has the uh, demand to provide the written uh, documents which meet the criteria of uh, relevance. Um, we, um, we face with the problem that the main document uh, was absent, insurance policy. 
So do you, do you, uh, sorry, technical problems. Due to the uh, lack of documents, um, unfortunately, Dutch denies our lawsuit. Uh, so, based on these uh, two cases, we can uh, highlight uh, the key points of uh, um, of actions of actions uh, for a successful decision for successful consideration of the case. First of all, uh, you must prepare uh, the standard uh, set of documents. It's uh, maybe insurance policy, deed of assignment or segregation act, bank receipt, other maybe other uh, document which uh, has uh, uh, useful information and uh, uh, is related to your um, case. But uh, you uh, also must be prepared to show and to provide the court with a different uh, set of documents in order to show whole chain of relations from the beginning, from the cargo owner. Um, and um, Unfortunately, uh, I, I know that uh, in some countries in, uh, in Europe, um, it uh, will be enough if uh, you will provide the court with uh, the uh, contract, for example, with uh, the signature only from the one side. Uh, but in Ukraine, we, uh, we had uh, this, uh, such cases uh, when we provide the contract with the signature um, uh, from the side of the uh, buyer, yeah, from the uh, sorry carrier or from the um, insurance company, from the one side only. And uh, unfortunately, courts uh, request uh, for the documents uh, contains uh, the signature from both sides. So it's also um, main um, issue which you uh, must um, to be prepared to uh, face to. Also, we advise you in case if you have some disputes or potential cases and you don't know, uh, don't know what to do, uh, please uh, uh, apply to a well-experienced lawyer, appoint only well-experienced lawyer having skills in similar dispute um, settlement because um, uh, only well-experienced lawyer know the, um, knows the um, specific of uh, the courts of judge in different region of our country. And uh, of course, uh, uh, he knows uh, um, standard difficulties and how uh, to resolve them. And, but uh, uh, in particular, he knows uh, uh, the um, features of uh, courts in different regions. Also, I would like to show you our case of co cooperation with another uh, office, with uh, our office in Romania. It's quite unusual and uh, um, typical case with a successful final. Uh, our client leading uh, insurer um, applies to us with the request to help him in Romania despite on the fact that we uh, are located in Ukraine. Uh, his client, cargo owner, wa uh, was um, um, had uh, damages uh, caused by action of the carrier. And uh, uh, our client insurer com insurance company uh, make a, a insurance uh, indemnity payment uh, by means of subrogation. Uh, so during the transportation of cargo, it was transportation of um, cheese. It was the situation that uh, illegal immigrants get into the track and uh, ate uh, the cheese, part of cheese. Uh, of course, when the cargo um, was uh, delivered to place of destination, buyer uh, refused to accept this cargo. Um, so we, uh, sorry, so we of course initiated uh, the 
court proceeding uh, against the carrier uh, and uh, by means of the subrogation lawsuit uh, by uh, means of the subrogation and uh, uh, the court uh, considering all factual backgrounds all documents uh, he uh, satisfied our uh, case and uh, the insurer uh, get his uh, compensation and uh, it's important to um, show you this uh, case because our um, VIP uh, client, who is an English company, uh, applied to us with the request to help him in Romania. So this situation uh, shows you that we can help you all over the world, but uh, you need to just to, uh, apply to us. Uh, key differences between uh, our country and Romania, it's uh, that there is a subrogation. The assignment of rights uh, from the uh, date of insurance compensation. As you remember, in Ukraine, assignments of rights in case of subrogation uh, occurs uh, from the moment of insurance accident. Time bar the same, three years, uh, without any limitation. Uh, thank you for your attention. If, in case you have any uh, question, for example, you don't know um, what to do and you have some potential case or just a question, please uh, send me a letter and uh, I will uh, provide you with the answer what to do, what chances to do you have and uh, or give you just short advice. Uh, so uh, my presentation is uh, over and uh, Merit, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Irina. It was a great presentation. Thank you. And may I have a screen to share as well? Yes. So I believe everyone can hear me and I can start my presentation. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, today in this great event. Uh, so uh, our uh, subject is subrogation and recourse. My part is uh, to explain this in Turkey. Uh, my name is Mertuna Akartuna. I am uh, uh, glad to be here with you. As you can see, this is a Bosphorus trade in Istanbul. And uh, it would be uh, our pleasure to uh, have you in our office to have a cup of coffee uh, and enjoy this perfect view. Uh, already, Irina mentioned about uh, our great partnership uh, as under the uh, organization of Interlegal. We have the offices in Bulgaria, Romania, Moldova, Ukraine, Georgia, and Turkey, which is uh, our part. And as you can see in the screen, uh, there are some aspects of law, shipping, transport, logistics, international trade, ports, terminals, corporate investment transactions, litigation, and arbitration. These are the services. Uh, our services are not limited with these. In any uh, need of legal assistance, please contact us. Please do not hesitate to contact us. We will be happy to help you. So first, let's start. Uh, what is insurance? The insurance is a contract whereby one party, the insurer, promises in return for a money consideration, this is premium, to pay other party, this is insured, a sum of money or to provide him with a corresponding benefit upon the occurrence of one or more specified events, which is risk. So we have an insurer, we have a premium, we have insured, and we have risk. So this, uh, these elements consist in uh, insurance in general. So why insurance is important? Insurance, in my opinion, is one of the most important elements in the economy providing foreseeability and financial, uh, financial stability, but not for the uh, investors, but all the actors in uh, commerce by mobilizing the domestic savings. So we have here foreseeability. Let me explain briefly uh, why uh, these items are important. Uh, foreseeability is a really important uh, 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 term in uh, commerce because there's always a fear of sudden loss like fire in a factory or accident uh, during a carriage. So by the insurance, we always know what's coming and what's gonna happen. So financial stability that we can say, you know what you pay and you secure your interest. So that uh, provides the financial stability. 
and insurance also supports trade and logistics because uh, the premiums uh, can be added to your sale price. So you know what is the cost of securing your uh, voyage or your trade and uh, protecting businesses and people. Yeah, uh, the insurance as the system uh, not only protect businesses, but also protects people and uh, supporting banks and investors. Uh, providing uh, investments a, a secure environment is also really important uh, duty of, of the insurance. So it enable uh, investors to invest in a wider range and uh, about supporting social security systems by generating huge funds. Actually, uh, governments are able to invest them in uh, however they deem fit. So they, uh, the insurance system also supports social security systems. So uh, our main focus today is subrogation and recourse. Uh, in Turkish commercial code, it's expressly defined. So I, uh, we believe it would be useful to actually show that to you. So I will read it uh, as you can see. Subrogation uh, was in Turkish commercial code article 1472. Insurer shall legally succeed the insured upon the payment of the insurance indemnity if the insured has right to sue third parties for the loss he sustained. This right shall pass on to insurer up to the amount it has paid. The important items were underlined and uh, was in red, as you can see. We will get back to that uh, later. And the second paragraph, if legal action or enforcement proceedings have already been initiated against liable parties, the insurer may continue these proceedings as per the rule of subrogation without the court, court's or defendant's consent, provided that it proves the payment affected to the insured. So as we can understand from the Search Commercial Code, uh, there is no other document is required. So if the insurer Provide, uh, provides proofs that he has made the payment. There is no need for any other consent to uh, be the subrogated part. So the conditions of subrogation, it was, uh, it was seen from the uh, previous uh, slide. Uh, it was expressly stated in the Turkish Commercial Code. There has to be a loss. There has to be a payment to the insured, not to other party, to the insured. And insured must have a rightful claim. What that means? It means that sometimes the event occurs and there might be a loss, but there has to be a liable party to claim this loss. If there is no liable party to claim, so that means that there is no subrogate, that there's no subrogation, there's no right to recourse. And finally, the claim limit, the amount paid to the insured. I can add here one more item that uh, this amount paid to the insured cannot be exceed the actual loss. So why subrogation is important? Subrogation is uh, actually really important in the insurance system because it enables uh, insurance companies to minimize the premiums because knowing that they can recourse to liable parties, they can keep the premiums at the minimum. Better terms for business. What this means is that with subrogation, uh, forcing uh, the insured party to uh, be more careful uh, about the insurance company, about uh, its liabilities, uh, insurance companies uh, may uh, brought better terms uh, for the insured. The wider risks are covered and uh, better terms may be set forth in the insurance uh, policies. Better insurance system actually is uh, what I just uh, explained uh, right now. The insurance systems are better because it forces communication between insured and the insurance company. So it goes, it uh, brings us a better insurance system. Finally, mitigating the losses, forcing insured to be more careful. As uh, we will also uh, check in the uh, forward, uh, the following slides that in subrogation, uh, there is actually some liabilities for the insured party to mitigate the losses uh, and uh, taking necessary uh, precautions to secure uh, the subrogated insurer. And 
After this, we can talk about the prohibition of enrichment by insurance. The one cannot obtain insurance indemnity by the insurer and also demand the same compensation from the liable party. The insured cannot be paid twice about the same loss. So uh, this means uh, that the insured party may not get rich, may not be paid more than he suffered by the parties. What I mean by the parties is the insurer and the, the liable party uh, of this loss. So the total amount insured received by insurance company and the liable party may not exceed the actual loss. This is what prohibition of enrichment by the insurance. And uh, of course, you are familiar with the deductible, uh, deductible uh, uh, in policies. So deductible amount in policy, what we're gonna do in such scenario? And in such scenario, of course, the insured party has right to claim the deducted amount from the liable party. So that means that uh, deducted amount from the liable party and the rest of the indemnity uh, payment from the insurer, it will be total, uh, it, it will be covering the total loss. So there is one issue we should mention here in subrogation, even after compensating the total loss, the insurer may not obtain the ownership of the goods, which is deemed to totally loss. Uh, what we mean by this, let's uh, work with an example. Uh, let's say there's a, a discharging operation uh, of the, in, in the vessel in a port and one of the containers fell uh, to the water. And immediately the insurance company paid the insured and after some while they took uh, this container out of the sea. So to whom this container will belong? To the uh, insured? or to the insurance company. Uh, as per uh, Turkish law, uh, paying the total loss uh, does not consist ownership uh, on the goods, uh, which is subject to the insurance policy. So there has to be another uh, deed to transfer these goods. So there has to be an agreement or a deed uh, to transfer this uh, uh, lost goods or injured, uh, damaged goods uh, to the insured. This is a reflection of the prohibition of enrichment, which we uh, just talked about. Uh, let's say uh, the insured party get this uh, container out of water and doesn't want to give it to the uh, insurance company. No, by the law, it has to give it back or it has to return the money consideration because the insurer will have a right to claim this amount uh, from the insured. So uh, now we come to insured parties liability in Turkish commercial code uh, in uh, 1448. It's also expressly uh, underlined the liabilities of the insured party. Uh, I will uh, read with you, if I may, in the event that risk occurred or occurrence of the risk become highly probable, the policyholder must, circumstances permitting, take measures to prevent the loss or its increase mitigate the loss and to protect insurer's recourse rights against the third persons. The policyholder must comply with uh, their instructions of the insurer as much as possible. If the insurer suffers losses by such breach, insurance indemnity will be reduced proportionally. So uh, we, we talked about uh, this uh, liability in our uh, uh, previous uh, slides that uh, as you can see, Turkish Commercial Code is underlining this uh, liability and forcing the insured parties to uh, communicate with the insurance company. So when the event occurs, we have to definitely notify the insurance company. And the burden of proof, of course, we have to talk about the burden of proof in subrogation. So uh, it's actually simple. If the burden of proof lies upon the insured, in an event subject to insurance policy, it will continue to lie upon insurer during subrogation. So let's say if there's a damage caused by a tort, the subrogated insurer must prove the losses and the liability. This burden of proof also uh, in complying with the previous slide on the liability uh, liabilities of the insured party. So if any action uh, or if any uh, precautions must be taken before this subrogation, 
the insured party must do this. So shortly, the time bars uh, before we pass to the case studies. In the land transport, we are also part of CMR. Uh, it's one year. In the three years, if the accident was in uh, purpose, recourse is three months. The maritime transport is uh, one year. The recourse is 90 days, of course, upon payment of the insurance uh, indemnity. Airway transport in the Montreal Convention, we are Turkey is a, a part and ratified this. It's two years. And railway transport is CIN is one year. If there's a gross negligence, it's two years. After we remember these uh, dates, let's pass to uh, uh, enjoyable fun part of the presentation, case studies. Okay, the first case is a new building vessel capsizing, sinking during the sea trial. So we have a ship purchaser, buyer, that's the insured party. There's a shipbuilder. Maybe you can see my mouse here. There is a shipbuilder. There's a shipbuilding contract between the ship purchaser and the shipbuilder. Then this shipbuilder uh, is a smart guy, said, okay, I need to definitely make a insurance on the, this uh, transaction. And they insured this operation with an insurance company. The insurance agreement, one party is shipbuilder, the other party is insurance company, and the insured party is the ship buyer. So the premiums are paid by the shipbuilder. So when uh, there was a sea trial, uh, the vessel unfortunately sank. And then insurance company, of course, paid to the insured party. And then insurance company thought that shipbuilder actually was liable for this damage. And then insurance company initiated a recourse action against the shipbuilder. And the shipbuilder said that, no, you cannot recourse this action to me. And uh, this dispute initiated like this. Turkish Supreme Court ruled that the insurance company may not initiate re recourse action against the party of, a, of the insurance contract. So uh, basically the Supreme Court said that Shipbuilder is not a third party in this relation because the shipbuilder was paying the, the premiums. The shipbuilder was the party of the insurance agreement. Therefore, no recourse action may be initiated against the shipbuilder. But we are uh, uh, not in the same page with the Supreme Court. We are not agree. Uh, we don't agree with this decision because. Uh, the main uh, aim of uh, the subrogation is actually to uh, protect uh, insurance company and uh, providing them right to uh, recourse that direct that loss to the liable party. We believe that even though the premium payer or insurance agreement, uh, uh, one of the party was the shipbuilder, we believe that they're still liable uh, for this uh, loss, because the important thing is that the main character is the insured. So the second uh, case, payment to the third party does not constitute uh, subrogation. So there is uh, XYZ Turkish company, and there is also XYZ a foreign company. They are uh, under the same roof, uh, but in uh, different, uh, they are formed, established in different countries. So uh, we can say that legally they are different uh, institutions, they are different uh, persons. So uh, the Turkish company is insured, the consignee and the owner of the goods. And, uh, but the foreign, country, uh, the, the foreign company is the, uh, the, the part of this insurance agreement paying the premiums and uh, the damage was done and the insurance company made the payment not to the insured, but to the uh, foreign company who was paying the premiums. And then after the payment of the, uh, after the payment of this uh, uh, insurance money to the foreign company, insurance company initiated uh, recourse actions against the carrier. But the carrier said that there is no subrogation uh, uh, in this uh, scenario because 
insurance company made the payment to other party, not to the insured. And the court said that well, that defense was uh, legit and dropped the case, dismissed the case because the insurance company had no right to recourse as subrogate. As you will remember what we told uh, in, in our previous uh, slides that in order to subrogate the rights of the insured, the payment must be done to the insured, not the third party. So that's also a, a really good uh, example. And now we can go to the other one. Our uh, last uh, case, consignee receiving double payment and by the recourse action uh, of the insurer and the recourse action of the insurer. So this is an uh, airway uh, dispute. Airway company is a carrier. Uh, consignee is the insured party. They have a contract of carriage with the carrier. And then uh, the damage occurs and the insurance company made indemnity payment to the insured. Perfect. But at the same time, the carrier also pays to the uh, consignee about uh, the damages. So the consignee, the insured party receives double payment. And then insurance company initiates recourse action against the carrier. Carrier claims that they already paid the consignee, therefore there is no ground for the recourse action. Supreme Court ruled that if the payment to the consignee by the carrier was in good faith, it may release the liable third party, which means carrier, and no recourse may be direct, directed to the third party in our scenario, the carrier. So insurance company has to claim it from the insured, not from the carrier. So uh, basically Supreme Court here discussing that uh, the good faith or the bad faith of the third party while paying the insured. Uh, for the Supreme Court and also we are of the same opinion, the good faith uh, means not knowing insurance company made the payment to the insured. Uh, they also some uh, some courts may extend this goodwill that the third party if knows the insurance uh, relation they are not in good faith uh, that might be uh, interpreted like this but uh, no we, don't, we are of the opinion that the good faith means that they don't know insured received the payment not there is a uh, just existing of the insurance uh, uh, policy is not enough uh, to uh, establish the uh, good faith or bad faith. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, that would be all. We would be glad to answer your questions. Uh, I'm Martin Akartuna once again. Uh, I, we are the proud member of the interlegal organization. We are in Istanbul. And I'm uh, again repeating that we would be glad to have you in our office here, have a, a cup of coffee or tea. Thank you. For you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mary, thank you for the brilliant presentation. And uh, may I add something uh, regarding your case two, case B. Uh, it was interesting that uh, uh, due to the fact that the payment was received by the third party, but not the party who was uh, insured, uh, it uh, cannot be um, considered as a recourse, yes? Yes, that is correct that the default of uh, the XYZ uh, company, we might say, they have, there has to be a specific and really clear instructions to make this payment to the third party. Mm -hmm. So in the trial, the parties were failed to provide these instructions. So mm -hmm. uh, for the court, the payment was to, uh, made to a third party, not to insured party, mm -hmm. and it was without the consent of the insured. That's why uh, the case was dismissed. Oh, uh, may I add something about yes, our course. practice in Ukraine? Yes, uh, it's a very interesting moment. Uh, in Ukraine, if we are talking about recourse, um, our uh, legislation says that uh, the party who uh, make a, um, some indemn uh, in, uh, pay, um, 
paid some indemnity, yes, uh, he uh, obtained the right to claim the guilty party. And uh, there is no uh, the demand uh, uh, to make uh, this uh, uh, payment uh, uh, only to the insured party. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, in case if uh, uh, the payment was made to a separate party uh, uh, directly by the insurance um, company, but on behalf of the uh, insured party, so it's uh, uh, it's normal, it's suitable for our country, and we have uh, a lot of cases in such ways because uh, they believe that it's uh, uh, takes uh, it takes a lot of time uh, first to uh, make a payment to insured party, and then insured party make and tra transfer to suffered party. So uh, just uh, insurance company make a payment to suffered party uh, at as, uh, all. So uh, in this case, in such model, uh, will be in Turkey also uh, considered as a third party uh, without, and it will not be considered as recourse. There has to be a clear instruction from the insured to insurance company that payment can be done to the third party. So in this case, if there was a, a document Mm -hmm. proving that XYZ Turkish company clearly instructing insurance company that they can make the payment to the third party, then uh, there won't be a dismissal of this case. There would be still a, a subrogated uh, party that would be, we will be talking about the subrogation mm -hmm. relation in this scenario. But there was no clear instructions to insurance company to make the payment to third party. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in this insurance relations, the insured must get the payment. That's the mm -hmm. that's the case. Unless if they uh, clearly, specifically, expressly uh, uh, tell or grant insurance company to make the payment to other party. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, in Ukraine, uh, in case if a uh, contract contains the provision that uh, the payment can be uh, done uh, to the bank account or, or of the separate party, um, it's uh, enough and uh, any additional instructions uh, uh, don't need. For example, the separate party can apply to uh, the insurance company of the guilty party yes and uh, uh, based on this application and based on the um, uh, insurance contract which contains such provisions of this uh, opportunity yes of such payment okay. uh, the payment can be done and uh, then the insurance company have uh, a right to, to go to the party with the claim by means of recourse yeah, in, uh, this is also applicable for the Turkish law as well. In some uh, insurance uh, liabilities, the, the suffered one may uh, directly apply to the insurance company. Of course, we are talking about the, the, the general, uh, uh, let's say, cargo insurance uh, policies in which scenario uh, the uh, one who suffers from the losses may not go directly to the uh, insurance company. Mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see a question. Uh, the first is power of attorney enough to engage uh, a lawyer. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, if we, we are talking about Ukraine, uh, we need to conclude the not power of attorney, but the contract uh, legal services agreement, because in uh, our uh, in Ukraine, uh, only attorney uh, at law can uh, um, can uh, be um, um, your legal representative uh, in court hearings. If uh, we are talking about claims handling and some negotiation, yes, power of attorney will be enough. But if we are talking about the court proceeding, court pro, uh, pro procedure, uh, it uh, needs uh, the uh, legal services agreement to will be concluded between the parties, between, for example, our uh, company and our client. 
Okay, for in Turkey, uh, the power of attorney will suffice to represent the clients in any uh, institution in Turkey. It could be in the governmental embodies, it could be in court. The legal service agreement is, it is not a must in Turkish law, but we highly suggest uh, legal uh, service agreements because it uh, definitely frames uh, the work of the lawyer, what is required from the lawyer and what is the purpose of this power of attorney. So even though it's not a, a must in Turkish uh, law to have a legal service agreement, we definitely suggest to have one to protect both interests of the clients and us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I see that uh, maybe it's all. Uh, maybe some any question, additional questions. Uh, anyway, um, thank you, dear colleagues, for your uh, um, attention. And uh, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us, me, and uh, Merit in order if you have uh, any questions or you have potential case and you have some doubts. Uh, uh, um, can uh, can you uh, um, do you have any chances? Yes, successful chances uh, in resolving of uh, your potential cases, or you need uh, some um, some comments uh, under our legislation in this sphere. So please do not hesitate and uh, send us uh, letters on our emails. Thank uh, you. I, I want to add one more thing. Uh, if you visit Istanbul one day, it will be our pleasure to have you here, host Thank here, you. and uh, give you Turkish coffee or Turkish tea. Thank you. The same. The same. Thank you.